I have to abide by their uh, their ruling uh, if I want to avoid uh, avoid an injunction, which could end up being uh, freezing of assets, uh, uh, then coming in uh, physically locking my doors, I guess, and uh, sorting of other things. Some of you may remember Kyle Thompson from two weeks ago. He owns Park Provisioners Barbershop and Haberdashery in Belleville, Ontario. He came to the Rebel through our portal at IWillOpen.com and then again most recently through our Fight the Fines initiative when he was fined for the scandalous act of opening his business to customers wanting and willing to support him. We can't have all those adults adulting and making decisions of their own. No. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini, and today I'm here to bring you the first business case in Ontario that was represented by our crowdfunding campaign at fightthefines.com. And Kyle, who still wishes he could remain open for business, of course with safety measures in place, was met with the full force of the law. He received two tickets and a summons to court, but he continued to remain open. So the Crown brought down the hammer and they ordered an emergency injunction against his business, threatening to shut him down completely for the remainder of the emergency order. We found out that the Crown can actually do this without notice to the business owners. Now, that didn't happen in Kyle's case. They gave him fair warning and a time to respond, but Kyle wanted to stay open. Here's what he had to say about the situation. All right. So, Kyle, you opened your doors last Wednesday. How did that go? Uh, you know, it was uh, the support was great. Um, yeah, the, more people showed up than what I thought. Um, it, it, certainly, there was a lot of people reaching out as well. Um, uh, there was uh, some good moments with it, of course, and then uh, there was some Disappointing moments. Obviously, we heard from a lot of uh, retailers that came through that um, just were unable to make it to this point, I guess. Um, they had to close their businesses. Um, some that are very frightened that their businesses are going to be disappearing very soon and not what, sure what they're going to do with it for their families and whatnot. So um, the support was great. Uh, that was one thing that was evident. Uh, it was just... You know, as we all know, the sad part of it too, right? So, and uh, you have received quite a bit of of publicity now since you opened. Um, what was the reprimand from law enforcement? Yeah, so the first day I received a fine. Uh, second day a summons. Third day is a summons. On the third day as well, um, we all of a sudden it was. Uh, there was a possibility of a court injunction coming towards me. Uh, and uh, what that resulted in is, in good faith, um, I ended up going to curbside for the Saturday uh, and, and so we could have further discussions, which we had uh, today. And um, it turns out that or I have to abide by their, uh, their ruling uh, if I want to avoid, uh, avoid an injunction, which could end up. Uh, freezing of assets, uh, uh, then coming in, uh, physically locking my doors, I guess, and uh, assortment of other things. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems to me like it's a uh, you know charter rights sort of thing, but uh, yeah, we'll get, I guess we'll find out. And you said that you have been met with a sympathetic judge. Um, who feels for small businesses. Could you give us any insight onto that? Uh, you know, I, I feel that he was sympathetic towards small businesses and everyone in the community. I, I, I don't think he's being unfair whatsoever. I think uh, he is um, uh, just doing what he's supposed to be doing, which is uh, following the law. And at this point, um, you know, you know, I, I have the feeling that he personally sees there's different ways and approaches to this, and obviously in, individuals could uh, try to take a different direction than that, but for my situation currently, if I was uh, wishing to avoid that injunction, uh, I needed to agree with uh, um, what the current standing is for the Emergency Act. So. Uh, 
that's what I ended up doing at this point. At this point, is it fair to say you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't? I mean, it it sounds like you your business faces closure what if you stay closed for a prolonged period of time. But if you try to defy the order and stay open, then there's the threat and the risk of seizing assets and other threats and fines. Um, I mean, where's the happy medium here? There isn't a happy medium, I don't think. I, I think where it, it lies is that, you know, there is certain things that I can do, I guess, if I wanted to. Um, you know, I could try to, um, you know, there's individuals out there doing podcasts. You know, this is legal. Um, you know, maybe if I sell loaves of bread or something, I don't know. Um, I simply need to kind of regroup, take a look at it, see what's legally falls with the Mills Emergency Act and follow that. And if I can do so, then I can remain open. Uh, but, uh, you know, part of this really isn't so much about me saying open. As I've always said, it's about the, uh, you know, tens of thousands that are being affected by this and are not being acknowledged. You know, all the social issues, the, um, the, uh, Individuals not getting nearly screened for cancer, the child abuse, uh, the suicides, the suicides. Um, this is more like it was about the businesses, of course, because this all rules into one, right? Like if individuals don't have jobs or a way to provide for their families or a sense of meaning of living, um, you know, these things are going to occur. And they are occurring right now at a rapid pace and are, you know, are going to continue far past this. So um, that's, a, you know, a bigger side of what uh, the bigger picture is, I guess, for me. Anyways, I, I just can sit aside and, and do that. So perhaps a call to action just across the board. Let's get back to normal, actual normal. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle, do you have a message for anyone, your, maybe your supporters or uh, the naysayers? Yeah, for all the supporters out there, thank you so much. Um, please keep in touch with us. Um, you know, whether I'm, uh, uh, what I'm doing from here, I, I can't really say at this moment. Um, I'm going to look at options and stuff like that. Uh, but additionally, uh, if I can't do something uh, more concrete with uh, my store or whatever, then I am still looking at uh, you know, working with other groups and that in social uh, issues that are occurring and trying to uh, hopefully get us all into a better situation of normal as they say um, or at least understanding what's going on uh, for the naysayers out there um, as i've always said um, this wasn't about us against them or anything like that um, but i believe those individuals they're going to continue to see more and more people come out uh, wondering what's going on, why our government's not presenting us with more transparency, or why they're silencing certain individuals and stuff like that, why they're not showing certain facts and numbers out there. And uh, I think uh, for you guys, if you don't want to see that or you believe that we need to see a, a different picture, uh, then continue to yell and yell loudly, but yell at the government to show those certain things to prove us uh, different and if they don't uh, do that then um, I guess you have to ask what's going on why they won't show those things so mm -hmm. but once great. again thank you everyone for the support mm -hmm. that's great um, very valid point there that you know it's not let's attack the little guy or or your neighbor let's rally the government to answer some of these extremely valid and compounding concerns so thank you, Kyle. I appreciate you uh, taking a stand here. And um, I think that there will be more to this story. So we're going to stay in touch. And let's hope to get back to actual normal. Thank you. Now, Kyle can challenge the constitutionality of the legislation brought against him. And so this court proceeding has really just bought him time to contemplate his strategy moving forward. At the beginning of March, Kyle will litigate his summons and his two fines through our Fight the Fines portal with a top-notch lawyer that we have crowdfunded to represent him and these cases. In the meantime, technically, the Crown has ordered him to abide by the restrictions and offer curbside pickup only. 
but this can only pertain to a small section of a shop, which is the retail part, but what about the other half? How can a barber offer curbside pickup? Maybe Kyle can curate some DIY haircut videos and perhaps the space would be considered a movie set and then he could open legally because for some reason, quote, despite the surge in COVID-19 infection cases, Hollywood production in Ontario has returned to pre-pandemic levels of activity. With so much economic uncertainty, who knows what the future holds for Kyle's shop? Procedurally, it's unbelievable that courts can get away with ordering these injunctions without notice to the owners, but here we are in an apparently free and democratic society, with business owners being threatened with criminal prosecution for simply trying to open and stay afloat. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. Here at Rebel News, we get results. Look at what happened in Alberta with Sheila eating her way to freedom. She covered so many restaurants reopening in defiance of the government-ordered closures that Jason Kenney announced he would reopen restaurants and gyms just a few days later. If you want to support the work that we do to ensure that everyone can get back to work, please consider donating what you can to our crowdfunding campaign at fightthefines.com.